Good evening, my beautiful brothers and sisters in Yeshua. Today is Wednesday, the 11th of October, 2023. It is 10.40 p.m. here in Australia. I hope you're doing well. I hope you're very, very blessed. Um, so I've been studying this afternoon into this evening, and it is a little late, and I should probably be going to bed, but the information I found, I don't think I'd be able to sleep without sharing it with you, my brothers and sisters. So... Um, all praises go to the Most High. I am just but a humble servant and vessel. But this is unbelievable, brothers and sisters. So from the video, my last video that I just showed you, um, talking about how NASA will be um, putting up three rockets into the eclipse's shadow on October the 14th into this um, ring of fire eclipse. And then we went down here and we learnt that APEP, or APEP, which is A-P-E-P, -E -P, um, is the name of these rockets. And it comes from a serpent deity from ancient Egyptian mythology. Okay, boy did that lead me down a rabbit hole. <laughs> and, I mean, these rabbit holes are so important because it ties in everything and it's... It makes things real and it makes things so like, aha, like clear and concise and Father is so good. Father is just so good. So with that being said, um, I'm going to jump into my Word documents that I did um, my study on this afternoon, this evening. And so I had a look into a peep or a pep, however you want to say it, okay, and uh, basically, this is a pep here. It's this water serpent. It's an ancient deity. And the idea of this a pep is that the sun god, Ra, this is like ancient mythology, e Egyptian mythology, right? But it's very important because the ancient sun god, Ra, which has a connection to like the son of God, right? Because it says in one of the last books of the Old Testament that the son of righteousness, that's the S-U-N, it says, the son of righteousness will rise with healing in its wings. So we've got to be a little bit more open-minded. So with this particular um, serpent, what was supposed to have happened was every day when Ra, the sun god, set, it supposedly went down into the underworld and this um a peep or a pep however you want to say it this ancient serpent would try and attack the sun god ra while it was you know in the underworld type thing and basically the mythology is is that sometimes occasionally um this serpent deity was able to swallow ra the sun god and this is when an eclipse would have formed. Like, this is really, really interesting, brothers and sisters, because, I mean, we know this is not true. I'm just showing you the um, the mythology behind it because it's very important to why NASA called their rockets this particular name. Now, when you see here, this is a picture, an ancient hieroglyphic picture. This serpent here, is in the water it's a serpent a large it's massive right i watched a bunch of videos on it history channel uh, you know ancient egyptian history channel all that kind of stuff just to really find out what the go is with this so-called serpent deity and um so this is in um, ancient egypt here and they're riding this um you know this boat here and this serpent is underneath right and basically, it goes on to say that all the Egyptians, they they didn't want, they built no temples to this ancient serpent because they didn't, you know, they want the sun to come up every day, right? So they basically um, made their sun god, you know, they worshipped the sun god and everything like that. And they tried to help the sun god so that, you know, um, this serpent couldn't attack or eat or get rid of the sun god anyway it is important brothers and sisters so when you go as soon as i saw this picture father laid on my spirit like boom remember where you've seen that picture before 
and we go down here to the I pet goat okay straight away I'm like no way father no way is this what the I pet goat was all about and brothers and sisters I'm about to blow your mind <laughs> okay so um, this is the same Egyptian boat that these people are riding in right with the ancient serpent underneath the water and see there's the Egyptian pyramids there and everything like that and then you have the sun and the when you watch the iPad goat thing the whole lot of it shows you eclipses so many times and um, so anyway we go down here and I said is this scene showing a pep the pep rockets being fired at the solar eclipse and this is why at the start of I pet goat it shows 12 p.m. and then it goes from light in the classroom to darkness outside okay 12 p.m. at Corpus Christi is the max eclipse and like Amos 8 says the Sun will go down at noon now is this their final attempt brothers and sisters so you can see the missiles there too is this their final attempt is this the ancient serpent the dragon that goes to tries to go and devour the child as soon as it's born and when that child is born it's getting caught up to father's throne is this like is this what John saw did he see this ancient serpent a peep a pep however you want to say it um, did he see this as a final attack trying to get the child to devour the child as soon as it was born and is this the reason why the verse says no weapon formed against you shall prosper is the weapon talking about these rockets that NASA which we know is inherently evil <coughs> I mean it's um its logo is like the snake's tongue and all the other stuff that goes with it right but is this the weapon form they're trying to form against us which will not prevail so uh, we keep going down here as you can see look at this brothers and sisters because I, I had a look and there was some YouTube sh you, YouTube shorts okay the terrible serpent of Egyptian mythology a pep okay and look at this cave and this boat is coming out of it look at this scene from my pet goat it's the cave with this thing coming out of it okay and the new Christ the Antichrist coming on it I mean brothers and sisters father is just blowing my mind and here is uh, the Sun God Ra okay and this is what he has above his head it's literally a solar eclipse the ring of fire okay and this is a peep trying to devour the Sun God and that is what causes the uh, eclipse in ancient Egypt mythology right this is unbelievable brothers and sisters I can like all praises go to the most high Jehovah holy 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 is his name like this is unbelievable okay and then um, I was watching this um, this um, Egyptian mythology channel and I just screenshotted some of the story like the mythological story about the beginning of the world and brothers and sisters I have to read you this now when I'm talking about this stuff please don't think I'm going down you know this other path or whatever I know who my God is I know the one true God and that's who I worship but I just want you to realize the the importance of understanding the enemy's camp and where he's coming from so that we can see what we're looking at right now is I think our our redemption brothers and sisters I truly believe this is it okay we have a pep and a tim a tum okay and this literally when you listen to it it sounds like Lucifer and Christ and Yeshua right uh, when they were created in heaven so like I said I've done some screenshots here it says the story of a pep and a tum the first battle between order and chaos the first sibling rivalry now <clears throat> I'm not saying thus saith the Lord I'm just saying this for the contents of it but I know that the um, 
I believe it is either the Jehovah's Witnesses or the Mormons, but they believe that Jesus and Lucifer were actually brothers. Okay, no, I'm not, please don't come at me in the comments and say this is heresy, rah, rah, rah. You know how my mind works and Father lets me go down these things because this all will make sense in the end. Okay, and um, and so it goes on to say here, and in the earliest of times, there was nothing but the noon, <laughs> which was a voidless, vibrationless existence. It was sound without vibration. It was a consciousness without no active thought. It was a deep sleep that had no dream. And after a time, it began to create the first being it created was a pep, okay, who was known as the great snake, the bringer of chaos, and the devourer of the the devourer of the worlds. He is the personification of all chaotic existence. <sighs> I I'm just going to throw this out here, brothers and sisters, but. You know, when Father talks about when he created Lucifer, he said you were perfect from the day that you were created, right? Um, what if, what, just listen, just hear me out. And this is just me talking to my brothers and sisters, okay? So please don't attack me for what I'm about to say. But is it possible that the Father created um, Lucifer first and and then he um, chose Yeshua Jesus Christ, because remember in the book of Hebrews it says to what day uh, we'll, we'll go there, so I don't mention my words and people get really super cranky because I know how it can be, but we just have to be a little bit more open minded, don't we? So, Hebrew 1, I'm pretty sure it's right in Hebrew. I didn't even spell that. Why, why is it Hebrews? Oh, sorry, I didn't put the S on it. <laughs> um, just stick with me now. The book of Hebrews. Okay. So listen to this. God, who at sundry times, that means in ancient times, right, and in diverse manners spoke in the times past unto the fathers by the prophets. Okay, so Father, in diverse manners, he spoke in the ancient times to the prophets okay and diverse manners means um, father's presence because father is a spirit no man has seen god okay this is scriptural no man has ever seen god and um, his presence came to the prophets and that via the way of uh, consuming fire um, a, a pillar of cloud and of uh, fire and uh, the burning bush and um you know just the presence um all those kind of things that's the diverse manner because father is a spirit okay and then it says and in these last days he spoke to us by his son whom he had appointed heir of all things by whom also he made the world um, who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person Oh, that's a, that's beautiful. That is so beautiful. And this is why Yeshua Jesus Christ is so, 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 so beautiful. He is the express image of Father's person. Okay, because Father is a spirit. So Christ is the express image of that. Oh my goodness, this is just beautiful. And upholding all the things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand side of the majesty on high. Okay, Christ himself purged our sins and because of that he sat down on the right hand side of the Almighty Father. Now it says here, he was made so much better than the angels as he has by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. For which, for un now listen here brothers and sisters, for unto which of the angels said he meaning the father god at any time thou art my son this day i have begotten thee 
And again, I will be to him a father, and he shall be to me a son. And again, when he bringeth in the first begotten into the world, he said, that's father said, and let all the angels of God worship him. This is the reason, brothers and sisters, that there was found pride and jealousy in the heart of Lucifer. Okay? Because Father has chosen Yeshua Jesus Christ out of all the angels. Now, if you, you're gonna, you can come at me and say, you know, blasphemy, you're calling Christ an angel. It literally says it right here, brothers and sisters. Okay, and this is exactly why I've been so passionate about the blasphemy of the doctrine of the Trinity, saying that Jesus is the Father, because he's not. Um, <clears throat> he, he expressed it very much when he was on this earth, and this is the reason why when he healed people on this earth, he explicitly said to them, Do, don't tell anybody, go to the um, temple and pay uh, the temple, you know, what is owed to the priests, make the sacrifice to the priests. Don't tell anyone because he knew people would go around saying he was a god. Okay, but the, what I'm trying to get at here, brothers and sisters, is that Christ was chosen. Yeshua, Jesus Christ, was chosen of all the angels. Father made him his only begotten son. No wonder Lucifer which was probably, he was probably made first and it says he was made perfect in his creation until pride was found in him. No wonder pride and jealousy came about in the heart of Lucifer. So were they really siblings? Because are we not siblings with Christ? Is he not our brother? You can see this in... Um, Brother and mother. Okay, in context. Okay, and he stretched forth his hands towards his disciple and said, we'll go to the full chapter actually. So it's right down in 40... Okay, and um, while he yet talked to the people, behold, his mother and his brethren stood without desiring to speak with him. Then one said unto him, Behold, thy mother and thy brethren stand without desiring to speak with thee. But he answered and said unto him that told him, Who is my mother and who is my brethren? And he stretched forth his hand towards his disciple and said behold my mother and my brethren for whoever shall do the will of my father which is in heaven the same is my brother and sister and mother <laughs> this is beautiful brothers and sisters and this this is why the story the love story of a fa our father in heaven the creator of the earth, the the um, fountains of the deep. Um, and look, I understand people say, well, you know, Jesus created the world. Yes, because it said that in Hebrews, right? It said um, the inheritance was given to Yeshua to create the world. Father made it into existence and he breathed life into each of us. But everything else was given to his son. All the authority, all the blessings, all the dominion, all the power, all the creation was given to him. But Christ is our, uh, Jesus Christ, Yeshua Jesus Christ is our brother. And the almighty God who is a spirit which no man has ever seen, that is our father, the one and only true father. And this explains so much why. Satan is so full of hate because of the jealousy that was struck up in times gone past, right? At the beginning of all of this. So with that being said, let's get back to my thing here. Um, 
as I talk about this and after a time it began to create the first being it created was a pep who is known as the great snake the bringer of chaos and the devourer of the worlds he is the personification of all chaotic existence now when you read Genesis 1 it says in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth and the earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep and the spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters and God said what let there be light and there was light and God saw the light and it was good Who's the light, brothers and sisters? Yeshua, Jesus Christ, he says himself, I am the light of the world. That he was the true light, which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. Then Jesus again said unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. He is the light of the world. And in um, Lucifer, he, was, he had darkness in him and chaos, cha chaoticness in him, right? And this is why, this is why he tried to, not tried to, he successfully deceived Adam and Eve in the garden. Because he was jealous. This is unbelievable, okay. So, um, and then it went down to say, and for a time there was only chaos. Then came a second wave of thought from the great noon. From that vibration it created a tomb. Who would also, uh, who would be known as a Tem, or a Men, or many other names, and he would be de uh, deified as the Creator God, but also associated with order. Again, Father gave the authority and the blessings for His Son of Light to be the Creator of this world. The law and order, where it is the light and order, and and the the um, Lucifer was the darkness and chaos. And over here you can read, uh, digressing for a moment, we find that other cultures in the ancient Near East did believe that chaos accompanied the creation, and that chaos, sorry, um, did believe that chaos accompanied the creation, and that chaos monsters had to be conquered especially Leviathan. Othmar Kiel and Christopher Ulinga in God's Goddesses and the Images of God, page 43, explains that Baal was acclaimed in Canaan as victor over Letuna, which is Leviathan. In the book of Job, we find that God was the victor over Leviathan. Okay? And then um, a pep and a tum. So a tum knew its existence and knew that it went deeper into the noon, that it would create only more order. And the delicate balance may in fact become tilted. A tum created his first children, Shu and Tifnut which is, I suppose, supposed to represent Adam and Eve, right? He sent them forth into the unknown existence to find a place to bring about life. Now, again, I want to stress, brothers and sisters, I'm not reading this to you to say this is the truth. I'm showing you from the enemy's camp about how significant this solar eclipse is and the reasoning behind this whole this whole thing that we're living in the first place the whole roots of how this came about the jealousy that sparked in the heavenly kingdom before this world even came to be and if you know the beginning you will understand the end okay 
It says, uh, a pep was a demon of the underworld in the form of a giant water snake. It was believed that he was created when Nit spat into the pr primal waters of Nun. He was the enemy of the sun god. Okay, and what do we have exactly below the virgin, the woman, where the soul eclipse is? Hydra. A giant water serpent. <laughs> okay, and then then Father just kept going like this is unbelievable. He just revealed to me what so many things are in this iPet goat thing. All right, so here we have the picture of Lily, or Lilith, or Leviathan. Okay, and there we have this solar eclipse, which has, as you can see up here. Mercury, it's either a picture of Mercury, this this dot here around the solar eclipse, there's a, a small dot here. It's either Mercury or it's the star spiker. Okay, and I think it might be the star spiker because of the fact that um, that's what Father instituted as remember and observe the month of Abib. Okay, this is the month I took you out of Egypt and Abib is when the sun and the moon is in spica and notice the jews call this um you know they call this their seventh month <laughs> when when it's really supposed to be the first month this is why there's such a link to the passover okay because like i said in many of my other videos this here proves that it's the month of abib and it's actually truly the first month. Like I've always said, it mirrors 1 to 7, 7 to 1. And this is why this, uh, our redemption that's coming up, I pray like I'm only a human being. I can't never be 110% sure. But I pray with 99.9% of me from what I've seen that this is going to be our redemption. Therefore being the second Passover, brothers and sisters, our Passover Okay, this is why Father, in the original Passover in Exodus, he came at midnight. The destroyer came at midnight, right? And the Israelites, they fled. They had to be ready. They had to have a staff in hand. They had to be watching. They had to be waiting. And then Father came at midnight as the destroyer and went over and killed all the firstborn. And then the um, children of Israel, they had to flee. Okay, and they got brought over through the Red Sea, effectively being baptized, right? Um, and now we've got the same thing. It says, the, um, Behold, the bridegroom cometh when the midnight call was made. But instead of mid midnight, it's going to be midday. It's going to be midday, brothers and sisters. This is unbelievable. Unbelievable. Okay, so here we have... The apple. And what is the apple? Israel. Israel is the apple of God's eye. And what happens? She drops it and they have fallen. The apple of God's eye has fallen. Why? Because of the serpent's seed. It came up and it intertwined through all the corruption and the pollution of the holy sanctuary. The manipulation of the DNA just exactly the same as the days of Noah. Then we go down here and we notice that just prior to this scene here, we we're in a classroom. There's people sitting in the classroom, the teacher's there, you know, Bush is there and then he turns into Obama, but it's daytime, it's in the classroom. And look at the time. When we go back into the classroom, you see it's five minutes to 12. And now it's outside. It's completely dark because it's noon. But it's lunchtime, brothers and sisters. It's not midnight. It's lunchtime. And the flag of America has been destroyed. The darkness comes at noon. I'm going to make the sun go down at noon. And it's going to be darkened in the clear day over the whole earth. And we have Psalms 23, 
not only Psalms 23, but for the year 2023, with a lightning strike coming down, because Satan falls from heaven again. This time, cast out for good. And you can see here, Psalms 23, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Ye, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, <laughs> I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff. See, the rod and the staff. Hold the rod and the staff in your hand and your sandals on and eat with haste. For tonight, at about midnight, I'm going to pass over. They comfort me. Though preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. He's preparing a place for us, brothers and sisters. He's preparing the table, the, fo the, the forks and the knives and the wine glasses and the plates and the silverware and the gold and the silver is all being laid out for us, brothers and sisters, in the places prepared for us. A beautiful feast await. Though anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Amen. And here we have a little picture in the iPad goat in the classroom scene of all the places that's marked. Now we have one in Oklahoma. We have one at the right at the edge of Mississippi we have one out in the ocean and then we have one right in New York and I'd say that's there right at the tip of New York right near where the um, where the um, harbor would be or whatever you have a port there in, in New York and I would say that these are marked for nukes I truly think that's when the time comes and God's hand has been lifted, that's when they're going to come. Here you can see, again, see Obama's cheek. It has this, the ring of fire and it has either mercury or spica. Okay, same with Lily or Lilith, whatever her name is. Okay, it's got the ring of fire and mercury or spica there. And then, okay, that was the solar eclipse, that one there. And then this is showing you, two weeks later, the uh, partial lunar eclipse. And this is why it's blood. This is exactly fulfilling one. Um, immediately after the tribulation of those days, and as I told you before, those days are the 10 days from Revelation 2.10. Okay, these are the tribulation of the 10 days that was stolen from Father in 1582 because it's the Jubilee. Father is now taking this back. Everything that was taken from the Master shall be returned. And that started on October the 4th. And um, from that warning, that the alert message that went through all of the USA, through all of Mystery Babylon, uh, that is the warning. That is the beginning of the 10 days uh, where the devil will throw some of you into prison uh, to try you in for, with tribulation, be faithful unto death to receive your crown. And then two weeks later, we're going to see the sun going black as sackcloth and the moon turning to blood. Okay, and this is when, see, notice he's got black wings. This is when the, um, this is when the angel of death, you know, his, the rider's name is death. And all of hell, all of hell followed him. Okay, he's going to two weeks later. And when the men and the great men and everything like that, they run into the caves and asking the rocks to fall on them, saying, who can, who can stand, you know, the face of the wrath of God and who should be able to stand? Because they're going to be realized that they've been lied to and it's going to be horrific. Then we come down here on the 29th. Um... It's, you know the 28th going into the 29th we can see where the moon is the full moon and this is in Jerusalem 
um, we've got Jupiter right under the um, the feet of the ram and the full moon is right above the Cetus constellation which is the great sea whale okay that is the constellation that they would look for um, especially uh, sailors and this is what Jonah this is when Jonah went on the seas uh, when he tried to escape God's command to go to Nineveh this is why the sea was so rough brothers and sisters because they were going through um, the section of ocean under the constellation of Cetus because Cetus at certain times of the year was extremely rough seas you know this is why people used to use and they still do the the constellations for navigation and this is the sign of Jonah on the full moon okay this is what Jesus said to the Jews you wicked and adulterous generation I'm going to give you no sign except for the sign of Jonah and it's right on the full moon in the and Cetus is the largest constellation in the sky you can't miss it and here we have um, the boy where the market plunge the dollar's gonna fail and we've heard so many times that when the markets crash it's gonna be on a Friday okay because it's gonna give the banks and everything time to say oh we'll fix it over the weekend and so people don't panic and then there's just the destruction of the dollar Friday is the day before the solar eclipse brothers and sisters okay the next over here you see war war coming one after the other this is the most interesting thing as um, you can see here the destruction of the mosque okay that sits on the temple mount at the moment this is exactly what they need to do and this is where I think the whole when you therefore see the abomination of desolation okay the destruction of that mosque because as I was doing this and as I was studying this I'm talking to a brother on discord and he shows me this video um, literally probably about an hour ago now and I was, I was happily doing this study and he shows me this video I'm watching it and I'm going oh my goodness this is just like the cherry on the cake this is the part that I'm missing and it's all about the red heifers okay I have a link here and I'll try and put it remember to put it in the bio um, but the red heifers are going to be ready on October the 15th the day after the solar eclipse now when they destroy the mosque that sits on the temple mount okay the temple mount the mosque is destroyed on the 14th via that solar eclipse this could be another reason why they've got those um, rockets it could be um, destroyed by a nuke because remember I said in my other videos I showed you that um, in the second book of Esther it says that on that day that the rivers will stop flowing for three hours and then you read in Revelation 7 that the four angels are holding back the wind so that the wind should not blow now if the wind doesn't blow the rivers will not flow okay so um, this is absolutely amazing brothers and sisters so if they're going to destroy those um, if they're going to destroy the Temple Mount okay and I truly believe that when the eclipse is at maximum and it goes over Corpus Christi at noon just like Amos 8 says I'm gonna make the Sun go down at noon and make the entire earth dark in clear day okay this will be when um, the darkness will come I believe exactly like uh, when Yeshua Jesus Christ was on the cross from the hours of 12 o'clock noon to 3 p.m. when he took his last breath there's going to be the three hours of darkness and something's going to happen with the war that's over there at the moment I think with what uh, Benjamin Netanyahu they're very very close to using the nuke okay very very close um, and they're going to obliviate that temple, the, the Dome of the Rock, okay, the mosque. They'll obliviate it because the next day then, the next day on the 15th, 
they can place the altar and this might be exactly when I was telling you that there was a, there's a man over in Israel at the moment and he's seen that the shrine has been built but the statue haven't been placed on it maybe the shrine is actually the altar because here's this video that my brother sent me it was a red heifer update one week before showtime and guess what happens okay have a look at this picture here there's flat ground all they need is um, the shrine or an altar to sacrifice this red heifer and they're looking towards the temple right all they need is a flat ground and an altar and it says here the Lord said to Moses and Aaron this is a requirement of the law that the Lord has commanded tell the Israelites to bring you a red heifer without defect or blemish and that has never been under a yoke this will be a lasting ordinance both for the Israelites and for the aliens living among them in Numbers 19 like can can you see this could not get any better in the timeline brothers and sisters like oh, my mind is blown my mind is blown you can see what they want to do they want to destroy the mosque that's on the temple mount the holiest site in all of israel they've got the red heifers and they said they'll be ready on october the 15th like you cannot make this up okay and then you have here the woman mourning okay again with the solar eclipse right the ring of fire You've got the woman mourning, you've got the nuclear cloud, you've got the children of, you know, of all the horrible things we've heard about the 40 babies that they've found beheaded at the moment. It's just the death, the death of the firstborns all over again. Here's, we've got a picture of like an AI, a robot person, and see, he takes this ribbon off this robot woman. She's definitely been either, either transhuman or she's a robot. And it's, she's obviously very pregnant. You can see she looks like she's pregnant. And he's taking this bow off, ready for, for their child to be born, right? Again, you can see this eclipse here. See? You can see. I know it looks like a yin and yang. But why is this marked here? Okay? Because this effectively should be over here, right? If it's a yin and yang. But this is here, just like all the other ones. It's a circle. And then, um, you know, Mercury or Spica. Here we have the picture of the fireworks scene. And that is, um, you know, there's been uh, a few media things now that I've seen that they're showing us that, you know, the explosions and everything that's going on over in Israel um, matches to like when they've had fireworks in the past. So they're showing us deceptive images and deception deceptive media there's a lot going on with that and um, I've already put a video but I, I ended up taking it down because whoever needed to see it saw it and um, you know we are told in Revelation that they call themselves Jews but they're not they're from the synagogue of Satan so everything is at its peak of deception right now and I'm going to leave that all in God's hands okay because we are supposed to pray for Israel and um, I am not the judge of no man I don't know who is evil who is wicked and who is innocent and who is good so that is going to be left into father's hand and I'm just going to pray pray for Israel and for God's children and same with the uh, Haleo font that's the creator of this IPEC goat their symbol again with the ring of fire and either Mercury or Spica. So now to now here we go. This is amazing, brothers and sisters. This is amazing. As I was finishing this up, I just had a laid on my heart Joel 2. And oh my goodness, again, praises to the most high. I am only but a vessel. This is incredible. All of Joel 2, I, I copied and pasted and put over, and then Father just laid on my heart all this stuff, okay? Blow ye the trumpet in Zion, and sound an alarm. Okay, sound an alarm. That was the 4th of October, brothers and sisters. That was the 4th of October. For all of Mystery Babylon, for every radio, TV, and phone, and digital device, all of Mystery Babylon, the USA, received an alert. That was the alarm. 
that was the 2023 version of the blowing the trumpet in Zion. Okay, in my holy mountain, let all the inhabitants of the land, of the land of the USA, tremble, for the days of the Lord cometh, for it is nigh at hand. It is coming, okay, just like Christ said, behold, the bridegroom is coming. He's not here yet, but he's coming. This is why you sound an alarm. You don't sound an alarm and then someone just appears. You sound an alarm to say, behold, someone is coming. Okay, October the 4th was the Feast of Trumpets, brothers and sisters. This is amazing. October the 4th was the Feast of Trumpets. It was the true Feast of Trumpets. The beginning of Father's 10 days that were stolen in 1582. Pope, again, for people who don't know what I'm talking about, in 1582, on October the 4th, the Julian calendar finished, and that was the calendar that was in the time of Christ. So on October the 4th, 1582, Pope Gregory took and removed and stole 10 days. So it went from October the 4th to October the 15th. In those 10 days was God's most holiest days of the year. Lucifer, Satan, the serpent, he already worked it out back then that that's when our redemption was in those blessed 10 days, the most holiest days of the year. And that's why they were removed and stolen because he tried to hide them. But guess what? It's a true jubilee and everything that was stolen will be returned to the master. And this is, this is why it's so beautiful. And this is why, again, there's a witness to the true and final jubilee of 2023. So October the 4th, the Feast of Trumpets, the beginning of the Father's 10 days that was stolen in 1582, the warning trumpet, the EMS alert, alarm, went out to all of the USA. Remember, in Leviticus 23, it's a remembrance of blowing the trumpet. So every year on the Feast of Trumpet, for all of the 48 years, you just have a remembrance of blowing the trumpet. But on a jubilee which you see in Leviticus 25, you shall cause the trumpet to be sounded. The alarm was caused. The alert was caused to be sounded in all of the land on a jubilee through all of Mystery Babylon. Okay, and as you read in Daniel 9, um, he talks about the 70 weeks. Okay, the 70 weeks. You've got 70 weeks to... Um, you know, to bring about everlasting righteousness, to have an end of sin, basically to get your stuff together. He was giving his people one last chance to get your stuff together, right? In 70 weeks, um, right, 7 times 7 is 490 years, right? That's what they work out, and it's, guess what? It's exactly the same as um, a uh, the night the 1582 was a jubilee as well when Pope Gregory stole the 10 days that was the true jubilee that's why it happened on that year and so that's your first jubilee then you count nine more jubilees to get to the year 2023 that's a total of 10 jubilees all up so 49 times 10 is also 490 years exactly the same like Daniel's 70 weeks mind blown much <laughs> absolutely beautiful now this is amazing okay all day all this morning i was looking at i just heard on my spirit be ready on the third day be ready on the third day and i'm like oh father do we have to wait to the, for the third day because because i've got the passover so much on my heart and spirit and i have for years and years and years i've always known that when our redemption will be a second passover so I'm thinking, okay, does that mean I have to tell people that they should wait for the three days for like when Christ was resurrected? Because that's when the resurrection happened, right? The rapture is sort of another version of the resurrection because the dead in Christ, the graves cracking open, etc. But, um, and then I came across this and I was, I was thinking, I thought, I remember ringing my mum and telling her on Friday night um, about this war that had started in Israel. I rang her on Friday night and I remember that because one, I'm sort of like a day ahead of everybody. Um, well, this, the USA anyway. 
and I rang her and because my parents are seven day Adventists, so they um, they have the Sabbath, so at Friday sundown. So I remember ringing her just prior to uh, the sun going down because she, that's what ended the phone call. She's like, "All right, well, I've got to, you know, I've got Sabbath now, so I'm going to have to go." So I was like, "Hang on, this war actually started on October sixth, and this is the be ready on the third day." Um, and I'll show you what I mean down here. And this is just a little clip article to show you why this it actually did start on October sixth, not on October seventh. Okay, it says the tension between Israel and Palestine remains at an all time high after the Palestine based terror group Hamas launched a multi faced terror attack on the neighboring country, leading to over 1,500 people dead till now. Um, Hamas launched a terrorist attack on Israel on October the 6th, a date which holds great significance in the history of both countries. The Palestine-based terror group had mapped out its battle strategy specifically to launch an attack on October 6th this year. On October the 6th, 1973, the deadly Yom Kippur War was ignited by a coalition of Arab nations. Okay, it's considered the holiest day of Judaism. So, you know, I mean, I know the news and that will say, oh, it happened on the 7th and everything like that. But it actually, because I remember calling my mum on the Friday evening and saying, mum, there's this war going on. There's, you know, there's all these rockets that just barraging. And um, it wasn't until about two hours later that night that I'm like, Oh, it was about three hours after that because Benjamin Netanyahu finally decided about three hours later to declare that they were in war. That's a whole nother thing on itself. So with that being said, October the 6th is actually when it first started, okay, literally on the Sabbath because, you know, not only did it, um, you know, do we recognize that October the 7th being Saturday, but remember they start their Sabbath in the evening when the sun goes down and this is literally when it happened okay so it's still highly significant still on the sabbath so um just gonna move this over for a sec all right so this is what makes it so interesting okay so on wednesday the 4th of october okay oh, this is on the hebrew calendar here wednesday the 4th of october the alarm went out Okay, and this was true Rosh Hashanah 1. Because you know how the Jews have two days of, of Rosh Hashanah? Okay, the Feast of Trumpets, the, it's a two-day festival for them for some reason. And God said, I will turn your feast. Okay, it's not his feast. I will turn your feast into mourning. So the alarm went out on Rosh Hashanah on the 4th of October on the Wednesday. That was the, um, the emergency alert that went out to all phones digital devices, TVs and radios, okay? And then Rosh Hashanah 2, okay? The alarm because um, because of the time difference in, in, in time zones and stuff. That's why it's a two-day thing. And that became Rosh Hashanah 2, okay? And then the attack happened on the 6th, on the Friday, okay? On the Jubilee. And it spilt over to the same day, but in the morning, um, the Sabbath. So be ready on the third day. One, two, three. They're attacked on the third day. Okay, here. <clears throat> it's going to be a day of darkness and gloominess, a day of clouds and of thick darkness as the morning spreads across the mountains. And remember, I said in many of my videos, I said, this is when it's going to happen. It's going to happen in the morning when the sun rises, because it's the least, it's the least hour they do not expect. It's a, you know, I always said it's going to happen in some time in October after all their feasts are finished. That's going to be on a, on a day they don't expect, but on the hour they don't expect is when the sun is rising in the morning. Everybody expects the sun to rise in the morning, right? And um, a great people and a strong, there has never, there has not been ever lo the like, neither shall be any more after it. So that's the verse, you know, at that time Michael shall stand up 
and there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation even to that same time exactly the same as joel and here you can see um this is um jerusalem sunrise on the seventh here is 6 36 a.m and there's here a little clip of an article at about 6 30 a.m local time palestinian islamist group hamas fired a barrage of rockets across southern israel with sirens heard as far away as tel aviv and beresheba <laughs> unbelievable brothers and sisters unbelievable then we um just for the sake of time uh, you can read the rest of joel and then we'll come down here um like the noise of chariots on the tops of the mountains shall they leap like the noise of the flame of fire that devoureth the stubble a strong people set in battle array this is a picture of hamas okay they are strong people set in battle array before their face the people shall be much pained all the faces shall gather blackness this is what Luke 21 says, men's heart will be failing them for fear and looking after the things which are coming on the earth for the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Okay, men's hearts. Could you imagine the atrocities that these people have seen over there? What's been done to the babies, what's been done to the, the women, and the children, to the, to the fathers and the, the men in front of their families' faces? And they shall run like mighty men, and they shall climb the wall like men of war, and they shall march every one on his way, and they shall not break their rank. Okay? Um, and they shall run to and fro in the city, and they shall run up the wall, and they shall climb up on the houses, and they shall enter in the windows like a thief. There's so many articles, but here's just one, and they are in my house. Um... The gunman showed no mercy, killing, kidnapping, kidnapping and starting fires to smoke people from their safe rooms. This, they've just come into the house exactly like it says in Joel. Right? And then we have in, in um, verse 10, The earth shall quake before them. And how many, how many earthquakes now have been in Afghanistan? Above six magnitude? About three or four now? And the earth shall trem tremble. And the sun and the moon shall be dark, and the stars shall withdraw their shining. Okay, again, remember I said that um, in Second Ezra it says that the rivers will not flow for three hours. In Revelation 7 it says the four angels will hold the wind back. So without the wind the rivers won't flow. And, um, and within that Catholic prophecy it says there's going to be darkness for three hours as well. And this is exactly like Christ on the crucifixion. Okay, there was darkness over the earth for three hours. It's the second Passover, brothers and sisters. Okay, this is why the stars don't even shine. October the 14th, the solar eclipse over the USA. This is for the United States of America, Mystery Babylon. This is the Day of Atonement. Okay, the 10th day of the 7th month. It's also the 10th day of the first month, because remember, it mirrors. Okay, what happened on the 10th day of the first month? The triumphal entry, brothers and sisters, when Yeshua, Jesus Christ, for those who are watching and waiting, with robes and palms in their hands, ready to lay down as Jesus rode in on a donkey. We're watching and waiting, and we're watching and waiting for Yeshua, Jesus Christ's triumphal entry of the second time, for him to come and grab us and get us out of here. Can I get an amen? <laughs> Can I get a witness? Like This is unbelievable. Okay. It's the day of atonement, the holiest day of the year, and everything is returned to the owner or the master, which equals Father's ten days is being brought back to him. The holiest days of the year. Matthew twenty four twenty nine. immediately after the tribulation of those days, those ten days that have been stolen, from October 4th to the 14th, shall the sun be darkened, the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And that equals the rapture. That equals the rapture. Ooh, 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 ooh. Oh, man. 
<laughs> doing the jig. And then all the tribes of the earth will mourn. I bet they will. I bet they will. And they're going to see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And this, on the Day of Atonement, brothers and sisters, this is when the books of life and death are closed and the fate is sealed. Exactly like it says in Revelation 22.11, He that is unjust, let him be unjust still. He which is filthy, let him be filthy still. And he that is righteous, let him be righteous still. And he that is holy, let him be holy still. Okay, um, and the Lord shall utter his voice before his army, for his camp is very great, and he is v strong that executeth his word. For the day of the Lord is great and very terrible. Who can abide in it? Great for us, terrible for them. And then we come down here, blow the trumpet in Zion and sanctify a fast. Remember up here, up the top? It was blow the trumpet in Zion and sound the alarm. We got sound the alarm on October the 4th. And now we have a sanctifier fast. What's fast? It's a mourning. It's a weeping. Okay. It's putting ash, um, sackcloth on and fasting because the destruction has come. Okay. Because the bridegroom has gone forth out of his chamber and the bride has gone out of her closet, brothers and sisters. Okay, and then, then will the Lord be jealous for his land and pity his people. This is the whole reason behind Jacob's trouble, the time of trouble, like never was before and never will be again. It is for Israel. It is to turn father's children back to him. It's for it's not for the lost. It's not for the wicked. It's not for the adulterers. It's not for the fornicators and the sorcerers and all of those people. They will have their just punishment, believe me. But this this time, this time of trouble, is to pur um, um, purify, refine, chastise. And push and push and push until the people finally realize they have to turn back to their father. Okay? And even then, brothers and sisters, there is still only a remnant that will do that. Only a remnant. And I believe that's 144,000. That is that is why they get sealed just before the multitude rapture happens. They get sealed first and then the multitude rapture, which is the dead in Christ and all of those people they're alive, left and remain of Abraham's covenant. All the stars of the sky and all the dust of the earth, an innumerable number that can no man can count. Right? And the hundred and forty four thousand get sealed and they go through. They see and as Psalms ninety one I believe is for them. They're gonna see these things with their eyes, but nothing will come near their tent. This, you know, this is why they they know the Torah so well they're going to see these things with their eyes but nothing will come near them they're going to be protected from the face of the serpent okay <sighs> but the rest shall fall so um, then then comes two weeks later okay the sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and terrible day of the lord come and that's on october the 28th with the partial lunar eclipse over middle east the solar eclipse goes over the usa mystery babylon and the partial sun, uh, lunar eclipse two weeks later goes over the middle east and this is the picture down here as you can see it looks like a crescent red moon but it's actually um a partial lunar eclipse okay it doesn't completely cover the moon but it does say that the moon will turn to blood because and and it's a day that they definitely would not expect right they definitely would not expect and what better to have a crescent moon because they love their crescent moons it's on all the moss it's on you know that's what the jews look to to start the the new month which is nowhere in the word of god it's only in the talmud the slither the crescent of the moon right that's why you see it on all the islamic flags it's from babylon 
so they can have it okay and so that I'm going to leave it with that brothers and sisters I hope this video has blessed you but um, I want to end on the fact that um, and it shall come to pass that whoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered for in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem shall be deliverance as the Lord has said and in the remnant whom the Lord has called so there you go I mean what a timeline what a timeline now I would be absolutely stumped if this this these times came and went <laughs> and you know what they they still can brothers and sisters they still can I am never going to claim to be a prophet I'm never going to claim to say you know the Lord showed me this 110 percent and I know this without a shadow of a doubt I know that we've been here before, but this is something incredible. This is something different because of the fact that we have the war in Israel, which is a total fulfillment of Luke 21.20. When you see the army surrounding Jerusalem, then you know the desolation thereof is nigh. We've never had that before. And then to learn about the 10 days that was stolen from Father on a jubilee, and then you read... In Revelation that the devil's going to cast some of you into prison for 10 days. And then you read immediately after the tribulation of those days. Which happens to be, I think, 10 days. That the sun will be darkened and the moon won't give a light. This is just too good, brothers and sisters. Like, it's just too good. So it's, it's, uh, it's too amazing for me not to share with you and to get excited. As this is a very high possibility. But um, as it's nearly a quarter to midnight, <laughs> I should definitely um, finish up. But I had to bring this to you tonight because, you know, if this is the case, brothers and sisters, we've got a couple of days left. And um, here's, the, you know, the video that I just did earlier today. This is my little document that I did up. I'm going to print it out. I just wrote... Um, Israel is at war. World War Three is imminent. Dear friends, the Bible warned about this very moment in history and we are here. We are now here. In the book of Luke, chapter 21, verse 20, it states that when you see that Jerusalem surrounded by armies, then you know its destruction is near. This war in Israel will lead to World War Three. This prophecy also goes on to state that very shortly after the war starts in Israel, Jesus will return for his people. There is a very high possibility that this will occur on or around the Ring of Fire solar eclipse on Saturday, the 14th of October. Please accept Jesus into your heart immediately as your Lord and Saviour and confess with your mouth that he died on the cross and rose again three days later and that his death paid in full all of the sins of this world. And then I just wrote, for more information, please search Rebecca B YouTube channel or email me at my email address there. May God have mercy on us all. And I've just copied it again. So I'm going to print that out. Like I said in my video earlier today, you know, if we each have a responsibility of warning 10 people, you know, I said, write something like this, print it out 10 times, you know, fold it up and go for a walk in the evening or at night time and go put it in your neighbor's letterboxes they don't have to see you i don't mind if you want to leave my name there you know they can have they can write to me in my email so you crazy lady i don't want to know anything about this that's fine i'll take that no problem at all because it'll give me a chance to minister to them <laughs> so you're welcome to leave my name there you can take it off um you know whatever you want to do Whatever you want to do, you can completely copy this. I do not mind. You can put your own words there. But brothers and sisters, 10 people is not much to ask, you know. Or go into a news agent and like put, you know, these pieces of paper into magazines. <laughs> so when people go to buy a magazine, they'll take it home and they're like, what's this, you know. I mean, we've, we've, got to, we've got to be, you know, we've got to think outside the box here because we're running out of time. But if we could each alert 10 people, imagine, imagine if one of those persons 
would be saved because of that. And, you know, they'd be in heaven and they'd come up to you and say, it's because of your letter that I'm here right now. <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, it's only because of the grace and, and love of our Father in heaven, what Yeshua Jesus Christ did for us. But, you know, this is our job to plant seeds, brothers and sisters, and we're running out of time. So with that being said, I best be going to bed. I hope this video blesses you. And um, I hope that you um, have a wonderful day, evening, afternoon, morning, wherever you are, whatever time zone you're on. And I will probably talk to you again tomorrow. I want to try and be with you and encourage you right up into, you know, to these last moments. All right, brothers and sisters, I love you with all my heart and soul and mind. And if I don't see you in the next video, I will see you in the skies. Bye-bye.